Hi, another game from the uh, first round of the Isle of Man chess tournament. This game is between GM Viswanathan Anand and international master Mark Esserman with the black pieces. So the game started off E4, C5, Knight F3, D6, D4. And now we have a knight off at the A6, Bishop E2. This is a slow variation. And uh, one of the favorites of uh, Anatoly Karpov in his youth. E5. And now we can see the imbalance in the position. This uh, variation um, is a very uh, positionally oriented variation uh, for white where he's just playing for this control over uh, this d5 square hoping to uh, create pressure pressure on this pawn uh, and eventually win it of course things are not that simple but uh, most of the moves uh, in the opening in, into the middle game revolve around the restricting of black from playing d5 usually uh, if black can play d5 uh, then it's a situation where he's giving up uh, some other form of uh, compensation uh, to white and this is again when uh, GMs play now if white slips up and allows d5 then of course black liberates his game and um, has prospects of becoming better in the position so queen c7 it's not the only move moves like bishop e7 can be played bishop g5 from Anand a4 again just holding back the advanced b5 sometimes this pawn goes to a4 and you'll see maneuvers where the bishop can come and be annoying here or even the knight get there sometimes bishop e3 b6 so idea of course it stops the pawn from going there but creates a place for the bishop to go and pressure the e pawn this knight has a um some more stability and coming to knight c6 also notice again with the pressure on the e pawn all right that's one way uh to play the position is pressure this e pawn and then hammer d5 home knight d2 Bishop b7, so we can see this battle for the square. Castles. And now rook c8. Now d5 has been tried here. Um, it's it's um, a little bit frowned upon. It's premature here because after e takes d5, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. A lot of pieces come off the board. We can see the white, the black king is still not... Uh, castled and sometimes white is able to generate some pressure here for instance at the move like bishop f3 and let's say um i don't know queen c6 that's for example bishop takes queen takes And I say queen g4, for example, with this pressure here. And then if a move like knight f6 and queen g3. And you got to worry about this rook coming here. And it's, it's a little premature here. You have some pressure here. So it's nothing where white is just dominating. But it's, it's kind of premature and white is able to create... Uh, some pressure. If bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, and again these are just samples, sample variations how it could go. Rook d8, then black at the, at the knight e4 can even try to tempt white excuse me, tempt black into taking this pawn. And again, it's all based on the same ideas of black just not being ready uh, for this open position. And let's say if 
B takes, you got rook takes, a lot of pressure there. So this is the general rationale for not playing D5 here. It's this black is just not really not ready yet and uh, to open this position. So rook C8, bishop D3. Bishop e7. And black black has a decent position. It's solid. Um and again it's not this is not one of those positions to create fireworks. But white is just trying to just keep black's activity to a minimum and hinder this d5 move. So for instance, d5 here could be met by knight takes d5. Knight takes d5, e takes d5, bishop takes d5, and then now you have bishop takes a6. You see, so d5 is always in the, um, you know, back of the player's minds, right? White trying to keep an eye that d5 is not possible, and black looking for opportunities to play d5. So bishop e7. Queen e2, again, pressure there. Rook got to go back. And now bishop c4. What is bishop c4 doing? Again, d5. Okay, this is a positional system that white is playing. This is not your t the, uh, English attack or your carriage attack. You know, you're throwing the pawn, you know, castle and queen side and throwing the, the pawns up. Castles. Rook d1 again. It's all about this. Rook fc8. Bishop drops back. Bishop e7. Nice prophylaxis right there. Again, black plant, white plans on moving the f pawn, so he just makes sure there's no scenario where he can get checked or anything. Bishop c6. There's f3. Bishop takes c5. And now with the dark square bishop gone, we can see now it's good that the king has cleared this diagonal. Bishop goes back. You know, again, just annoying, annoying black in the position. It's like white is like a gnat in this position white does have a big advantage but a small advantage and and black has to struggle uh for counter for counterplay here black's trying to make the play double edged but you know white just is it has the pressure has d5 square under control and is just limiting black's activity You know where that knight's going, right? We've been talking about d5 the whole day. Knight's going right here. And now with that trade, because you might be like, wow, why did black trade that bishop for the knight? Well, that took all the pressure away as far as, um, you know, d5 advances is concerned. Now it's straightened out. It took a weakness from black, which was that backward d6 pawn and straightened that out. But... Now white can just concentrate on the domination of this square. And unfortunately for black, he doesn't have the ability to get this knight here. And what's great for white is that even if he were able to get a piece into d4, white always has the opportunity to play c3. Black doesn't have the opportunity to play e6 because he's already played the move e5. Okay, so again, these are, you know, evaluations that strong players have to make. And that, you know, White gave up the bishop pair, but he realized that in this closed position, bishop pair isn't going to be as valuable as having these, these knights. Knight e8 by Eshelman. Knight e3, again, killing all counterplay, right, there will be no f5, or none, none of that to, to open up this uh, diagonal here, 
And so this is Black's main problem here is just suffering from a lack of counterplay. Knight d6, and he's trying, but it's it's just you know the you know he's playing you know the tiger man. Bishop d5. B5, so there's some um, you know, expansion on the queen side. Bishop takes, queen takes, knight c takes d5. Bishop takes a4, and now we see black starting to crack under the pressure. Because now we have clear clear targets for white there's there's no this is a, a excellent example of how to play this system now if you're if you're a, a positional type player and this is this is the type of game that you should study hard right if you like playing like quiet sicilian variations you play this type of game where you just you know s slowly you know just uh, squeeze the opponent you know you don't allow them to get too active and you just take over these important squares. Remember the game started out with this battle over d5. So we see what happened. And now in the bid for counterplay. Black is pretty much forced to create these weaknesses. Okay black is forced to go for it. But unfortunately white's pieces are placed so well that. Black's counterplay is just going to prove detrimental. It's h4, not only creating loft for the king, of course, and avoiding any kind of back rank controversy, but gaining space. Okay, so now Black has to worry about getting mated. G6 and the nine just returns. It says, hey queen, you gotta go. Queen goes to D4. Nine just simply wins a pawn. And it's just like the um, black position just falls apart. Queen G5. There's e5. Rook takes, uh, excuse me, rook a4. Queen to f4. Oops, sorry, looking at that pawn right there. King to g8. A 9 plays a very strong move, e6. Rook a1 is playable also. The idea of hitting this knight and then when this knight moves, say to b5, then grabbing this pawn right here. It's also good. e6. I think e6 is is more likely to induce panic in a player. And you play a move like that because it's so close to the uh, king. Better than the game continuation is probably rook b7, but still um, at the queen e4, it's still going to be curtains for black. F takes e6, and now tactics from the Indian Grandmaster, knight f6 check, queen takes f6, and now there's just too many problems around. Gives up the piece, queen takes, check, and rook takes a3, and that is all for I am Esserman, as queen uh, takes will lead to Rook d7, and eventually mate will occur. So, for instance, at the rook b1 check, king h2. This is really all that uh, white or black can resort to is just giving up the queen. So, instead of that, he just resigned at move 46 at the rook takes a3. So, great game uh, by Anand. Just summing, summing up, we saw a quiet variation of the Sicilian. Again, this was an old favorite of Karpov. Back in the days, he used to play a4 and 
uh, F4 against against the uh, E5. You know, right here, it'd be like A4, F4. Of course, after moving the knight, knight would traditionally go back here. Castles and Bishop G5. And you have this battle for D5 with Bishop E6 and all of that stuff. Bishop E7, knight would be here. But in this game, we saw the knight go back to F3, which is perfectly fine. Again, inadvertently, by hitting this guy, battling for this square. So he backs up this knight. There's A4. And again, the idea of white is to restrict the activity of black. Black is trying to be active as possible. Bishop here with pressure not only on the E pawn, but on the D5 square. Ultimately, black had lost the battle for this square. And once he lost the battle for that square, uh, white dominate, began to dominate the game. You know, about this point. And we saw black really had no, um, I'm not going to say he had no counterplay, but he just didn't have enough. He tried his hardest, you know, with opening up the position here, even at the detriment of his pawn structure. But it just was just was not enough. Those uh, knights positioned as they were, domination of a d5 like that. That the positional domination uh, overcame any attempt at counterplay that um, that Black tried to employ. So that was the basic um, theme in that game right there. Was this um, domination? of the d5 square so i hope you enjoyed that please like subscribe and uh, comment and check out uh my other videos and i'll see you soon on the next video